This Simpson meter has at least one problem. And let me show it to you. It's in the off position right now. Let me put it to DC positive. And I'm going to short out these leads. And let's go to R times 10,000. And let's zero that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's go to R times 100. And that looks pretty good. And R times 1. Oops. I have a real problem here. It will not come close to zero. Let's go back to 100 so I can this in there. Okay, so this is it. at least one of the problems. We've got this hooked up to positive and common. And uh, the 10k ohms seems to be working, and so does the 100, but not the times 1 ohms. So, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the wiring diagram and see what we might need to take a look at in the Simpson meter. Here's the wiring diagram, or the schematic, of the Simpson 260 Series 7. I got this off the web, and it's just wonderful that you can get this information. I do want to point out a few things here. If you look at the top, I'm looking at the ohm circuit right now, and I have lit up here the R times 10K, R times 100, and then times 1. These are the columns that we're going to be looking at for the ohms. Now as far as the buses go, if you look all the way to the right, this is how the buses connect. Those arrows move over as you turn the dial. Here is the 10K ohms, 100 ohms, and 1 ohm connections. And back to the 100 and 10K ohm. Here's our resistors down here. And of course I took some time to measure each one. This is the 11 ohms here. And of course the first thing that I noticed when I got the back off of it, it looks like there's been a repair here. So I thought, oh no. But they're all good. Everything checks out. Uh, so whoever did this uh, did a good job. So Look at the wiring diagram here. And, uh, oops. There, that's better. And so this resistor, this, 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 and this are all good. And this is uh, uh, 10, 10,100, and this is R1. Okay, so uh, I'm scratching my head and thought, well, we're just going to have to start following these connections here and see if we can't find something wrong someplace else. Well, to shorten this up a whole lot, I 
got my common lead on my ohmmeter right here. Goes through a couple of fuses and comes down here and goes over to this long bus here which is this is the long bus right here okay and I've got this turned off and I've got the batteries out and there's no connections on here at all for the ohms just the long bus so this is what I found meters on ohms and I hit the long bus here and I get about 80 ohms and I look at this again and at most it should be just a few ohms so oh well We've got some fuses here, but I don't ever remember having a fuse that, you know, didn't blow out all the way or uh, was good, you know. So, here are the fuses right here, and uh, I'll take them out, and we'll take a look at what I found. Okay, here's one of the fuses. I've got the battery there just so I keep the fuse from rolling around. Okay, I think I got a good connection on it now. And about, whoops, sorry about that. It's awfully hard to do. There we go. About 1.5. I'm afraid that you know, push on it too hard and it'll fly off the table. And here's the other fuse. This is a slow blow. And there's our 80 ohms. It should only be an ohm or two at the most. Okay, I put the batteries back in it. Put the fuses back in. I got a different fuse. I don't. I don't have the one uh, that it calls for, but uh, we'll get one. And let's. Short these together and let's go to our times 10k. That looks good. Let's go to now that's running on the 9 volt. This is the one and a half volt and times one. Here we are. Much better. Here we go. Thanks for watching.